In this episode, cloud storage, convenience, data responsibility, and encryption. Things you need to know. Don't forget to continue listening. What I'm going to tell you might blow your mind. So welcome to the 41st episode of your Technology Questions Answered. We are July 10th, 2011. We'll be talking about cloud storage and encryption. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Z-Axis. And why is it that I know all about this, folks? I work for a company called Z-Axis Productions. Yes, the same one that you see on the bottom of the screen. I am a digital technologies consultant. I deal with this information all the time. What do I do with my data? How do I protect my data? Where should I put my data? And if this thing is so sensitive, why is it that I can't put it online? Well, today I'll answer you things you didn't know about cloud storage or maybe knew a bit about. So let's start breaking down the topic into a few things. First of all, cloud storage is a convenience service. We all know we need to make backups. We have to make multiple backup versions on top of that on multiple media. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to store it on CDs, hard drives and on servers. Now here's the thing. I believe and a lot of people believe that the more convenient the service it is, the easier of a target it is and the more dangerous it's going to be. So this is why when I actually talk with people that need to secure their data, I have to be very frank with them. Data in public is not as secure as you believe. Now of course, the convenience factor. You're still going to have to save this file somewhere. If it's not on one server, it's another, and you're still going to have to leave it off-site. And you got many ways of doing that. You can use internalized cloud storage, which is basically your business and you have multiple office areas. You can sync your data in between each other, but you still are a target for those hackers that want that data. So you're still going to have to listen to this. So what do you do to deal with all of this? So let's talk about all of these popular services on the internet. Most notably Dropbox, like you see in the title, which actually recently, in recent history, had a problem with the login part of the program. People were able to log into other accounts without even having the correct password and easily access the files, which I'll get to after. Then you've got things like iDrive, Carbonite, SkyDrive, to name a few. These services are all cloud storage services, amongst some of them the most popular cloud storage services on the internet. Some of them deal very well with the security issues. You're the one who decides the passphrase for the security encryption key, therefore all the data on the server is ultimately encrypted. If you don't even remember the passphrase encryption key, they can't even recover the files for you. That's how secure it is. I'm talking about if you want a file to be really secure on the server, you have to make that file so hard to recover that the sysadmin can't even recover that file without the correct passphrase. That is security. But services like Dropbox, they use your own encryption algorithm, which is why I'm going to talk about data responsibility. You're going to look at all these events from all these other places, looking at groups like LawSec and Anonymous, which, from personal belief, are just little bumps that itch. These are not actually the dangerous groups. They're the most publicized groups. They do a lot of so-called damage, but they're not the most dangerous groups on the internet. The most dangerous black hat hacker groups on the internet, you don't even know their names of. And these black hat hacker groups are pissed off at people like Anonymous and the former LawSec because they're doing the counterproductive thing of hackers. Hackers are not supposed to A, name themselves in public, and B, tell of their exploits. This is where it starts to get a little dangerous. If it wasn't for these big groups, maybe some of these companies wouldn't get around to securing your data. Thank you for at least that, although I'm not particularly fond of the way to get around to doing it. But then these other bad guys are going to try to find some other way to get at your data. Now protecting your data is going to be what I'm going to help you to do today. So let's talk about who is actually responsible for your data. Is it the server hosting your data? Well, they are responsible for the data, but ultimately, who's the one who pays the penalty? And that's the person 
who's responsible for the data. If you put your data on the server, you need to be certain that the data you're putting up on that server is information that you are putting up in a way you are comfortable with. So how do we decide the comfort level? Let's say scares the bejesus out of you, encrypt those things. Or if I could put it on Facebook, you can leave them public. Doesn't really matter. So let's talk about Dropbox and a program called Secret Sync. Secret Sync allows you to pick a username and password, which isn't necessarily secure, but they allow you to pick your own passphrase and they actually tell you if you lose this passphrase, we cannot recover the information in that account. Which is, by the way, if we get back to the original point, a lot more secure. Like I said, if the sysadmin cannot get your data, that's secure. Now, you use Secret Sync, it creates a folder within your Dropbox folder where you put all the data that you need to be encrypted, encrypts it, and then puts it into that folder which gets synchronized with the Dropbox server. And even though you can see the files, you can't access the files using your Dropbox program. You absolutely need Secret Sync on the other side to unlock the files. This is how you know it's safe. Because on the other computer, you still need to put in exactly the same passphrase to access the data on that directory. Otherwise, it's just a load of gibberish. And they can't actually repair that file after. So, Secret Sync is maybe the best short-term solution to dealing with data security. It's not the best one. Now, how do we go even better than Secret Sync? Because Secret Sync, great, except that it uses the same passphrase for all your files, which I am not particularly fond of. I prefer multiple passphrases for multiple files. So, how about this? We're going to go straight to Paranoid Red. Red, okay? Let's start with each of these secret files you don't want anybody to look at. And what am I talking about? Budgets, photos you don't want anybody to see, videos you don't want to end up on YouTube, and on top of all that, projects people aren't meant to see, at least not yet, like so-called classified stuff. Let's talk about those. Encrypt each of those with at the longest possible passphrase that you can think of, and each of them have their own unique passphrase. You can write them down. You can store it on a different server. You can do anything you want. Just make sure that the passphrases aren't with the files. And by the way, the longer the passphrase, the better. And if you can include capitals, small characters, numbers, even s symbols, that will make the redundancy of that password better. Because that means that file when it's going to be in a way that even if they start using the single character one at a time, it'll take so long that you, your file might expire before they actually have the time to get at the contents in there. But that's just stage one. Stage two, the use of hidden file containers. What's that? Well, I actually did an episode on this. The episode has the title stenography in it or encryption. Basically I've got two of those. But basically the gist of it is you take one file and you put the other files inside. That is file stenography, hiding files in plain sight. And that's not image stenography like some other people do, but I'm referring to the file stenography. Now, you create a hidden, not a hidden, but an encrypted file container. And you put all the files inside that have all the different passphrases, and then you can create container over container over container the more containers that are encrypted the more encrypted your data is going to be the safer it's going to be the more you do the better it's going to be and like I said if each single one of those layers don't have the same passphrase that's even better because if you decode one and you manage to decode the other ones after that's not security that's insecurity you need to be as secure as you can possibly be you don't want anything about Somebody accessing your Facebook page, guessing your mother's maiden name, and getting to your accounts and pulling out those files and just going at it for an hour and being able to publicize it. You need that thing to be secure. So make sure that you don't use the same passphrase on every single layer. Like I said, you can write them down and store it somewhere else. Just make sure nobody knows what you're talking about in that file. Then, 
Here's another trick. You need that file to be really secure? How about you go Mission Impossible secure? First movie, remember how Tom Cruise had to get two different files and then link them together to get all the names of the spies and their code names together? Guess what, people? You can do the same thing. You take that multiple level encrypted file container, you zip it, and you break it in two. And then you zip, uh, you encrypt those two. Then you store them, get this, in two different places. So if you got a, how do we say, Dropbox account in one place, store the other one on iDrive or SkyDrive or something like that, and make sure you don't use the same username. Hint, hint. That's usually what gets people into trouble. So if you do that and you never tell anybody what the other services are or your passwords or anything, even if they grab one and start decoding all the way through, they may never get enough information to figure out what the files were in the first place, making it ultimately more secure even if it gets into the wrong hands in the wild. You'll be able to say, well, they only got half the data. What are they going to do with half the data anyway? If you only have half the encrypted data, they may actually get to a point where they figure out what the password was supposed to be, but they don't have enough information to confirm that it was actually the correct password. So, like I said, you might actually win for once. And anyway, hackers, yeah, they're good, depending on which one you're talking about. Don't be afraid of anonymous or anything, but those unnamed ones, okay, they might be good. But that doesn't mean they're actually going to waste their time on your one file. I mean, like, you don't have any of these huge computers that can instantaneously break the encryption yet. They don't exist. Even if they say they exist, they don't exist. So don't worry about those things, because if they existed, somebody out there would be cracking all the passwords on the Internet right now, and they're just not doing it yet. So how about next week? We continue on the same paranoid look, except we're going to be using a piece of software called Ghostry. And I'm going to show you how this gets installed, show you what the results are going to be on your screen, and even explain what the results mean. This is going to be a program that tells you what trackers are currently running on a website. And I'll explain a few things about trackers and websites at the same time so you don't go completely off the bridge. And until next week, if you have any questions, comments, stories, or suggestions, send them over to tqaats at access.net. And if you want access to our listener survey, our show notes for this episode or any other previous episode, access to the subscribe options for iTunes, FeedBurner, and YouTube, if you're not already on YouTube listening to this, or if you just want to help us out by purchasing some of our unique gear and apparel or donate to our PayPal account, all the information you need and more, including our Facebook page and Twitter feeds, are available at www.zaxis.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and tell your friends all about the show. Don't forget to give that like button some love. This has been your Technology Questions Answered. Stay safe and online. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. Till next time.